the story of Thwaites is that we've watched the ice shelf go from a big solid ice shelf 30 years ago to a disintegrating mass of rifts and fractures and crevasses um, producing icebergs and losing a tremendous amount of the ice shelf. And so with Icefin, we're able to explore these places for the very first time and get melt rates inside the crevasses and get melt rates right at the grounding line. And so that helps improve our, our models, right? It doesn't change how fast things are changing. It just changes the conditions under which they're happening, or at least our ability to resolve them. The Thwaites Glacier is essentially a very slow moving mass of ice that's coming off the Antarctic continent and moving into the ocean. It's one of the most rapidly changing glaciers in Antarctica. Why we're interested in Thwaites and particularly the Eastern Ice Shelf is that the ice shelf is changing very rapidly. It's breaking up, it's retreating, and that's allowing the grounded ice to get into the ocean more quickly, causing sea levels to rise. When we went to Thwaites and observed underneath the ice shelf, we found this immensely warm water. It was about a degree and a half above freezing, and that should drive a relatively high melt rate. Um, but what we also observed was this layer of fresh water right at the ice base that creates a very strong density gradient, and that density gradient stops the heat from getting from the ocean into the ice. Now in our computer models, they aren't able to represent this layer of fresh water. So they produce or predict a much higher melt rate than we actually observed because they don't contain the necessary physics to exactly match the melt rate. What our work shows is how complex the interaction is between the ice and the ocean in West Antarctica. 